Testing, 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 testing. Ooh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go fast tonight. So no need to go to the bookstore. We're gonna go quick. Let's some of the announcements. We got uh Julie's women's only class on Tuesday, 6 30. Wednesdays are is the Zoom call. That Zoom makes it easy. You just get on there, you can listen to the message, you can sit in your car, you can sit in your house, and you can get real with nobody watching you. You don't have to put your camera on if you don't want to. But there comes a point where you, you got to get real about this because uh, all conspiracy theories aside, anything could happen now. There's nothing that could happen that I would wake up and be shocked. Not one thing. I walk here a block, it's nothing but marijuana smoke, multiple neighbors smoking. Spirits are easy to pick up. Every time you had sex with someone that wasn't your wife, your husband, you picked up spirits. You can pick up spirits from cigarettes are powerful spirits. Alcohol, beer is a brawler, wine is a mocker, stiff drink to those that are perishing. Grumbling, complaining allowed the serpents to come out and kill the Jews, to kill God's people. God sent them on his own people that they would learn not to grumble and complain. Most people really never ever got out of themselves. It's hard to get out of yourself if you never do anything for the Lord. Because ministry doesn't really make sense. Ministry is hard. People don't listen. People are stubborn. So you, it's, it's got to be the move of the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do. But he's a performer of his word. I believe he's a performer of his word. That's why I preach it. And... Hey, some people are ready. Some people the Lord is looking for. Our jail ministry, I'm almost convinced now, we're planting seeds in the fentanyl recovery group where there's always a preacher in there. Guy comes in, he goes, man, I don't know how this happened. He's about 50. He goes, I, I got off drugs. I'm an active member at this church. I serve. I, I'm into leadership. I got a good job. God's blessed me. I got a family. And this just went through one time just doing drugs. How, how did this go so fast? Because to whom much is given, more is now required. When you were Billy Dum Dum and you don't know Christ, you're not accountable for too much. God's just looking to save you. But once you get saved, now there's this grace period for you to grow, to learn. He's got to lead you to his word. He's got to lead you to some good people of God. He's got to lead you to somebody to mentor you, to encourage you. Because Christianity is not designed for you to do it by yourself. But once you get some mentorship, once you get some word in you, oh, once you get the Holy Spirit, once you use your gift for the glory of God, oh, you went up on the radar. And the devil said, hey, we got someone up here. We got someone operating in the 1%. And the first thing they do is they say, well, what do we got on him? Well, he slept with 25 chicks. Uh, he lost all the time. He watches porn twice a year. Uh, he'll smoke some weed now and again. He gets pissed off. He gets angry. Gets to drinking. He'll kick back a six pack now and then. Uh, he just, they just, they just. There's a printout. You're fighting not flesh and blood, but Satan, principalities and powers. These are the fallen angels, rulers of darkness of this age. This is where they train spirits to bring what they are. Woman, thou art loose from the spirit of infirmity. It takes 35 years to hunt her all over. I saw some guy the other day. God blessed the man. He had one of those big things on his back. He's probably only 60. That's the same spirit I would assume was on this woman. But now 35 years, he probably hasn't had it. his for 35 years. He was in Paradise Valley. He got out of a choice BMW. He's probably got some medical care to kind of fight it. But ultimately, she's bent all the way over and can't raise herself up at all. And Jesus says, woman, thou art loose from the spirit of infirmity. That means if you pray for this woman continually, it's a waste of your time. Jesus doesn't tell you that praying for will help to send someone that knows about the spirit world to discern in the spirit realm, to take authority, which was given to us by Christ, to cast out spirits. But deliverance doesn't work if you're just full of rebellion. I mean, you can get a booster shot of it, but if... You just want to do evil, then they're just going to recycle. They're just going to keep coming. 
You'll open the door. They'll all come back. They all come back. Not some of them. They all come back. That's how it works. And then pretty soon, you felt pretty good. You got to chirping and telling your friends about how deliverance was real and how they messed up. And they didn't get the truth. And they need the truth. They need to go here and this and that. And then you're all jacked up. And they go, oh, deliverance, huh? Ah, deliverance over demons. Didn't work out so well for you. Because the devil, you, become, you go up here. Everyone's down here just doing nothing. You're doing nothing. I went to the church the other day, the McMega church. It was the biggest altar call I ever saw. I couldn't believe it. It took an 87-year-old man to do it. They had to walk him up on the stage. But he had the anointing. He had some revelation. He said the anointing doesn't just fall on you. Oh, the anointing is when you pass a test. You have to pass a test. The Bible says if you're not faithful with a little, you don't get it anymore. If you don't pass the test, you can't say, Lord, give me my anointing for my ministry. And you're not faithful just to take care of your own kids. They play with the phone all day. They're 15. They're on porn. You can't wrangle them because they throw fits and they go into depression and mom becomes codependent. Begin to take in the kid's side. You don't get any sex. You're pissed off. Then, ah, that's hands off. I got to keep my life in order. Without this, then I spin out in lust. And the devil just runs families. He runs them from top to bottom. Then they give you all this sports garbage. Get away from sports for a while. It will be a, it's like, I, I still like football. My son plays football. But I am so far from watching baseball or, or basketball. I'm like, this, this is lame. You just watch this for three hours. I mean, yeah, it's a nice talent. Six foot 11, runs like a deer, jumps over the top of the bat. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular moves, but... Do I really care? No. You, you get off two, three years of watching TV and you tune into a sitcom, you can't believe people's brains have been dumbed down that stupid to watch that stuff. The devil's in, he, he's in war mode. He's, he's cranking to the end now. We got this psycho over in uh, France and he's saying, yeah, we might have to drop nuclear bombs on Russia. This right out of his. This isn't conspiracy theory. He says it. You can watch it. It's mainstream news. Why don't you do that? I don't know much about nuclear bombs, but it took two in Hiroshima and Nagasaki to kill a quarter million people, and then another half million to a million died from radiation poisoning over the next twenty years. All kinds of birth defects and whatnot. That's just two of them. That's some old school technology. Talking that crazy and people. Aren't, why? They knew what they were doing with all this nonsense, wearing your mask, whittling you down. They were whittling down your patience. They were whittling down your ability to stand up. It was a force. And go to the gym, sir, pull that mask over your nose. Sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave if you keep doing this. Then they come with sympathy. Sir, Sir, they'll shut us down. They're coming in here. They're going to shut us down. We've got a little exemption, a little time to come in here. They had everybody. Why? Oh, because a man can't serve both God and mammon. Mammon is material possessions. Mammon is money. And everybody needs their money. The businesses need their money. People need their money. Everybody's living check to check. Oh, and then they, they release this delusion, stimulus checks. Everybody took off. Only people who had little codes and had the people in the bank could write those. What a scam. And they whittled us all down to where we didn't have any fight left in us. People ch shut your church down. Once they shut your church down, I probably wouldn't have came back. I probably wouldn't have came back. Well, maybe if you shut it down for a couple times, maybe a week, you were wrestling with the Lord, you came back, you said, hey, we can't do this. The Bible says we obey man's law until it tells us to disobey God's law. Then we don't obey him anymore. This is what the Bible says. I'm not making it up. If someone said that. Then obviously there's grace and there's mercy. You, you, you could keep going with that. But when they just keep going on, oh, now we're going to go into Easter. The kids can come and pick up some. Don't you want to do good with your kids? Don't you want them to experience the love that you had as a child picking up Easter eggs? And the bunny, what a delusion. It's lying to kids. All lie. I read the scripture. 
all liars go to hell. First deliverance I ever had, 1993 or 94. Deliverance from a lying spirit. And all my friends who didn't get rid of it became multi, multi millionaires. The devil will give you a spirit and he'll give you the world. He just wants to forfeit your soul sometimes if you have a dysfunctional family and no offense. It doesn't matter. Hey, the Holy Ghost moves through people with low IQs, but hey, he'll just bash you. He'll just keep you down. He'll just keep his thumb on you. He'll just get you to expect what your intelligence level should be able to earn. He'll just drive you into despair and confusion. He'll throw depression on you. Oh, he'll throw a voice in your head. Then you'll go to a secular doctor who thinks you're 10,000 chemicals accumulated over billions and billions of years, and he'll think he can fix you with chemicals because you're hearing a voice that's not your own. Then they put plastic and everything. I probably got a plastic shirt from Nike right now. I'm touching plastic. I'm drinking out of plastic. They want to emasculate us all so we don't have any fire. They did it to the Japanese. Japanese were warriors. Japanese were hardcore in World War II. Hey, whatever. Hey, you're, you're, you're out of ammo. That was code world. You're the last ammo. And he became a kamikaze. And he's like, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make my life count. And blew himself up. They were hardcore. What do they do? They send him over Edaname from Wisconsin. And emasculate him. So there ain't no warriors over there. There ain't no ninjas over there anymore. They got in assembly lines. They went to work. They signed up for the program. This thing is a delusion. It's a delusion. Dude, the biggest headaches I ever saw was with girls with hot bodies and great faces, cow tailing to them. Those marriages all burn and crash and double-minded and cheaters, money grubbers. You need a chick that's got your back. You need a woman that's loyal to you, that will pray for you, that will forgive you, that'll be there, wipe your kids' behinds and comfort them and go to work. Oh, this system, delusion. Anybody that got involved with anybody, that uh, they won't hire you if they go and look at your Instagram or your Facebook, whatever. That's just a data mining system. Uh, I guarantee you the first load of $350 billion came from a military contractor over to Mark Zuckerberg. They said, hey, thank you for being the face. Thank you for being the front for the data technology. They catch everybody in criminal activity with it. They quit showing it to you on the first 48 hours. And that's why they dumbed that program down to just the severe ghettos of Oklahoma City and Atlanta, Georgia, just in these impoverished areas, because they were catching everybody with Facebook. There were some you were watching, and they said, hey, they would get in there. They'd say, hey, he talks to his old fling every once in a while. They'd tap into her site and say, hey, just wonder how you're doing. He's lonely. He's running from the cops. He's like, hey, can I stop by your house? Boom, they're waiting for you. Oh, and everybody just signed up for it because they want to see what kind of house he got. They want to see if he's fat now at 40. Uh, just delusions. People taking pictures of this and that. It just shows you a lot of mental illness. I've watched it. I don't even have it. I watched my wife's. And I, I don't want to. I don't want to chit chat. You want to see me? Come on down here. This is where I'm at. I got an email. So call me on the phone. Figure it out. You're desperate. You'll get a hold of me. I'll help you out. I don't need nine million little projects of trying to micromanage somebody and help them. Either you're gonna have some fight in you. I'll teach you how to fight. But if you don't fight to go all the way to be a disciple, it's in vain. You were called for good works. You were called to be a minister. And I've seen the weakest, talented people become very effective ministers. I, I went into the jails with a guy. He could barely speak English. He brought his guitar in. He couldn't even play the guitar. I'm like, dude, you think, I mean, he had like three strings. And, and I'm like, what is this guy? And we started praying for people, and people started falling. Cast, demons were flying out of people. A uh, couple people got healed. He said, thanks for bringing me in your service. I haven't seen this. I'm from Ecuador. And he showed me some videos. And I'm like, who's this guy? This was your mentor? He was all fat now. He got Americanized and eats too much like all of us do. And I said, what? That's you? You were preaching like this in Ecuador? And he had the Holy Ghost for years. Oh, but he looked at me like a chubby guitar player that that couldn't play hardly at all. But hey, he was able to praise God with his heart. He was able to, he could barely speak English. We were in an English-speaking service. We didn't have any translators. 
He knew enough to communicate some stuff, but it was tough. But the Holy Ghost fell. He wasn't coming in his own power. He wasn't coming in his eloquence. He wasn't coming in his splendor. He wasn't coming in his fine speech. He was coming in the name of the Lord Jesus, the God that had saved him, the God that had filled him with the Holy Spirit. And he wanted that God to come down and touch some more people so they didn't have to go to hell. Hell is real. It's not like your Seventh-day Adventist kook friends tell you. Hell is eternal. It says the worm never dies. The fire never quenches. So there's a worm that never dies. There's a fire that never quenches. There's weeping and gnashing of teeth. But you're trying to tell me the weeping and the gnashing of teeth stop, but the worm never dies and the fire keeps going? And who's the first ones thrown in there? The fearful and the unbelieving. What were they fearing and unbelieving? They were fearing to believe fully in the gospel. Of course, everybody wants to get saved. I'm smoking weed every day. Uh, I do everything I can. My only category was like, man, are they, you know, is my reputation going to be good if I'm with this girl? I need to be, I need to hold myself in high regards for the other women. I had no morals whatsoever. I'd run across evangelists. They'd preach to us. They'd, break, they'd tell us about Jesus. I'd tell them about Jesus. I'd tell them what he did. I'd get high and tell people about Jesus. But I didn't know Jesus. I knew all about him. The word of God is living. It's active. So you can grab some word of God and, and it can do something in you. It's power. And you can believe it enough to, to teach it, to regurgitate it. But the reality is you're supposed to know the Lord Jesus. I didn't know the Lord Jesus until I was 24 years old. But I knew all about Jesus. I had told people about Jesus. And you don't know him until you repent of your sins. Someone I'd been to church, CCV, from the OG of CCV. And, and I had been there 50 times, at least 20, 30. And I felt some anointing there. There was some anointing. The guy was a good guy. He'd come down. He'd talk to people. There's three, 400 people in there. He, he tried to make himself available. Uh, good guy. But they never told me about hell. So I was saying, hey, I need Jesus, but, man, I, I'm going to the NFL. All I got to do is take some juice. I'm going to make it. I'm one or two years. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I got some stuff to do that would be contrary to living for Jesus, so I'm not willing to commit now. I'll commit later. It wasn't until someone broke it down and says, hey, just know this. If you don't want to get saved, if you die without the blood of Jesus, then you pay for your own sins, and that's hell. You are eternally separated from God because of your sins. If you believe on the Lord Jesus and put your faith and trust in him, his shed blood, which is living and active, it's not just shed 2,000 years ago. The blood is alive. It will wash your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. Your debt will be canceled. You want to get saved? And I still wanted to say no. And God had to show me a 3D video. Not only would I beat people up, I'd drink beer and brag about it. Not only would I do all kinds of other sins, I'd brag about it. I would glory in my sin. And there was a come to myself moment where I said, wow, I'm not afraid. I'm seeing all this, 24 years old. I said, I, I'm not afraid to do this, and I'm afraid to pray. This doesn't seem right. I'll pray with you. And I wept for an hour, and I wasn't sad. I was like, what is this? There's something wrong with my eyes. What is this? Why am I doing this? I can't let this man see me cry. We do business together. He'll think I'm weak. He'll try to get over on me. What is this? Oh, it was my soul rejoicing. But my flesh was so hard. My flesh was so, so in control that I had no sensitivity to my spirit, man. Even when I was born again, it took until I began to read the word of God to bring change. That's what it took. It takes you to get in the word of God. If you're not in the word of God, your change is going to be small. If you go and just listen to someone's version of that chapter and you get a little encouragement, you have some fellowship, that's all good. But that's going to be a slow process, 10, 20 years. We ain't got 10, 20 years for you to get yourself right. We don't got that. You got to get in the word now. Oh, I get up at 5 in the morning. I got to go to work. You get up at 3.30 then. You go to bed earlier. Oh, I got to do this. You got to do something for you. I used to work 10 hours a day, go in and preach three messages back to back to back under the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I'd go home. I wouldn't get home till 11 o'clock. I wouldn't see my kids in the morning. I was up out the door before they got up. They're all in bed, wife's in bed before I get home. I'd wake up the following Tuesday. Plus, that Sunday, we wouldn't get out of here till 10.30 at night doing deliverance on Sunday nights. That was Mike's main teaching night. And on Tuesday, I'd have more energy than ever at any point of the week. Why? Because God promised, I'll supply all of your needs according to my glorious riches which are in heaven if you trust me. Now, I don't do three services anymore. I do two. I bring Pete with me. In case I get tired, he can take it over. But the reality is he was supplying my needs. He'll supply your needs. You just got to study and show yourself approved. A workman not needed to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Because if you don't rightfully divide the word of truth, you don't know it for yourself, then the devil will bring shame on you. He will embarrass you. He'll embarrass you. And you'll suffer the consequences. He's coming for real. He's coming to steal. He's coming to kill. He's coming to destroy. He's very effective at it. He's got the whole world under his sway. And uh, he's on full force. He's on full force. And, I mean, we need to be praying. We need to be praying like never before. All these military men coming over the border with tactical gear, people interviewing them say, hey, man, how come you men don't want to check in with the border and get your asylum date? Oh, we're just here for work. What kind of work? You ain't doing no day labor. These dudes look like they got cash. They're good. They all fly over somewhere in Mexico, and they just walk right across the border. Nobody cares. It's a free-for-all now, and it's meant to implode. Your 100000 your 400000 in the bank is one day it's going to be like all these other f messed up governments when they all come tumbling down, and you're going to go, oh, man, you're going to cry. They're going to weep. Their hearts are going to fail them for the fear that's coming upon the earth because in one day, oh, it all comes crashing down. And you trusted in this system, trusted in the system. Oh, I just buy stocks. I'm a good investor. So your company can go work with slaves and you profit off that. And just because you turn a blind eye and you don't do your due diligence, I say a man, so whatever he sows, he'll reap. And ignorance is never a pass in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible is ignorance of you being unaware is a pass. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 7, I'm the vine. This is Jesus. I'm the vine. My father's the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. There's got to be some people taken away out of your life. They won't do nothing. They don't want to respond to the gospel. And you can't love them into the kingdom. That's not how it works. A man has to have a love for God far beyond any kind of love for you. Now, you loving them is good, and it shows a good seed, but you hanging around with them like it's all fine, and they're on a highway to hell, and they're not even putting up a fight, just like ACDC sang to you in 1982, and you just watch it all go down, you become spiritual dull. You become spiritually numb. You become, over time, spiritually deceived because you're overriding your conscience. You're overriding your God instinct. So there's some things he's got to take away. He says, every branch of me that bears fruit, he prunes. So he's trying to make you more fruitful. Then you get to a refining process. Some things you used to be able to keep around in your life. Now he's saying, hey, we got to go to another level. In order to get, go to the other level, isn't just because you went up to the Flagstaff retreat for four days and heard 15 different preachers. It's when you could say, okay, Lord, I'm willing to let some more things go. I'm willing to give a little more time. I'm willing to let some people go. I'm willing to just trust you with them, Lord. You're the only one that could have saved him to begin with. And he starts pruning that you would be more fruitful. He said, you're already clean because the word which I have spoken to you abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And having encounters with Jesus is not abiding with Jesus. When you seek him, he says, my mercies are made new every day. You make a decision every day what you're going to do. There's a current. If the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, it shows you there's a spiritual current in this sin-stained world which we live on. It came in through Adam's sin. He's the biggest sellout, double-crosser, evil person that ever walked the planet was Adam. He sold us all out into slavery. Sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and then death reigned. Why? Because the wages of sin was death. That's what God spoke to Adam, and he warned him. But he had free will, and he made the choice for us. So there's the, this current. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. I've been in the current. I, get, I got a job, and, and I get busy. 
And I do some preaching. I'm like, oh, you know, I preached to that guy for 45 minutes. I had an hour over here. I preached it. Oh, I've been in the Word. But if it's not personal time with the Lord and it's just working His Word, it's different. And I can feel the current taking me. Oh, today was a dilemma. The, the world's a scam. My buddy has been selling his cabinets for 14 years. We're, I'm, I'm the project manager on a $1.7 million house. And he said, hey, We've got the system down. The, the cabinets are coming from China. They're good stuff. These guys buy 8 million of them. They're Harvard grads. He goes, I found a better place. It's a little better. It's a little better cabinets. You, you got to take the drive. It's on 60-something Avenue and Bell Road. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't like going that way. I get depressed over in that side of town. If you live there, God bless you. It's probably nice. I don't like it. I said, all right, I guess I'll go over there. I go over there, we buy the company eight seventeen thousand dollars worth of cabinets. They come, we didn't even catch it until there was one cabinet short, and then it's this wholesale company comes and delivers it. And I said, wait a minute, I started looking at them, I said, man, these cabinets don't look that nice. I said, there's a lot of melamine stuff on this. And I'm like, something's off with this. We call them up and says, oh yeah, those aren't the ones in our showroom. These were a different level. So we're opening the doors. We're driving down to your showroom to see these only products that you have in your showroom. And you send us something that wasn't even shown to us. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, you, you, your guy's flipping it. He just wants to make the money. He's got a hard money loan, doesn't he? I said, no, he pays cash. And he's not interested in getting ripped off. Oh, man, let me see if I can talk to him. Little 20-some-year-old multimillionaire kid whipping and snapping and trying to make money everywhere. Cheating people. Got him a brand new Audi out there, probably $135,000 at least. Oh, lion. Might give you his business if you don't re-up. I'll yelp you. I will Google bad review. You never gave a bad Google review in my life. I'm about to start. So someone else doesn't have to feel the pain. But this is how the sin-stained world is. Then it's another thing. And I'm like, you know what? Man, I'm not even tripping. Got another chance to buy this other house. I'm like, I'm not even talking this guy into buying the house. Either he wants to do it, it's this amount of commission. I, I'm going to trust what I got. I, I don't need more money. I, I'm not rich, but I'm just going to, I got to be about God's business. I can't be getting sidetracked. I can't be emotionally. I can go to work. I can take care of my job. I can do good, but I don't need to get in this sway of this currency of getting mad and frustrated over money. This whole thing is corrupt. And nobody cares. They're all lying. It's all a scam. They're not getting rid of the people at the Texas border. They were distributing them to the areas where they can vote. They were distributing them to the areas where they would give them all the information, all the documentation. You could get your driver's license. You could get on welfare. You could get on food stamps. You were getting equipped. And then when it got too heavy in those cities, then they would distribute you out, and they would pay for it. Why? Because they're expecting a lot of you to keel over who went over and got yourself jabbed up numerous times. That's, go look. Go look how many people, go watch the obituary. Died suddenly, died suddenly, out of nowhere, unexpected, rapid cancer everywhere. Jeez, in six months. Dude, there are, this is the warfare. You're living in the end time warfare. If you don't think so, you think I'm a quack, you better do some research. I think it's all a scam. I think Tucker Carlson isn't woke now. I don't think Russell Brand just came out of his Satanism coming over to the, to the Republican side. I think it's all a scam. All of them are scamming. It's all just a delusion to give you false hope. I'm telling you, I got the spirit of discernment. The demon busters came out. I knew Daniel Adams was fake. I knew that was Kundalini right out of the gate. They had him on the movie. They had him all around. We, we got 35 people here. He's flying in, and they're giving you first-class tickets, putting you up in a hotel, and he's downloading demons in people. They finally figured it out a few months back. In order to discern good from evil, you got to get evil out of you. Am I perfect? I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I live in this flesh. This flesh is deceitfully wicked, but I got the Holy Spirit. I'm to walk by the Spirit, and then I won't gratify the desires of my flesh. If I decide to live by the flesh, I can do sinful things, say stupid things, become selfish. I can do all those things. Adam and Eve sinned with no demons inside their bodies. You don't need demons in your body to sin. It just helps them to run the system once you let them in. And then the system just runs on. When you got depression, when you're fighting with your wife, your life is chop suey. When you're fighting with your wife, 
Your prayers don't get answered. It, it, it tells you Satan can chop them right down. They don't get off the ground. You're cooked. If you can't get your prayers answered, you're cooked. If he's attacking your mind and you, you don't believe Jesus wants to give you a sound mind and self-control, if he's told you to, to operate and control your vessel in sanctification and honor to take thoughts captive and obedient to his word and you can't do it, God would never ask you to do anything he wouldn't give you the power to complete. But if you don't, can't have soundness of mind, you can't control fear, fear tries to get up on me. I live in this place. This is the hood. I got psychos coming around. I got an 18-year-old blonde hair, blue-eyed daughter. Uh, you know, I, I got a wife. You know, I'm not worrying about it. He tries to, hey, you should get some extra locks. Man, you should load those guns. I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't ready yet. Now nah, I'll, I'll, I'll rush somebody. I'll, I'm not afraid of your gun just yet. But when it's mobs and you know, there's, there's going to be a time. Jesus told you. He said, you got two tunics. Sell one and buy a sword. That's New Testament. You're supposed to be able to protect for your own. You're not supposed to have some psycho demoniac running around raping your women, raping you. No, you got to have, you got to fight back at one point. But these people are so demonically infected in politics, they don't want you to be able to fight back. They don't want you to be able to fight it. All this stuff's going on in the whole world. All this war. You know, it's going to cause another person to cause a school shooting. Well, get them off the psych meds and diet sodas because it's like acid on your brain. And it's causing it to malfunction. Then rejection teaches people to have a little bit of love for somebody. You know, people, when they grow up, sometimes they're ugly, man. They're ugly. They don't look right, teeth crooked. They don't got good... Hygiene, they got all kinds of problems. It doesn't mean you don't love them. I've seen all kinds of people transform, change, become incredible fathers and great mothers. It doesn't matter what you look like. Tell somebody to come out of that little wormhole of selfishness and narcissism and give a little love to somebody. There should be somebody to support somebody. There should be somebody to have some love and some encouragement somewhere. Oh, no, they don't want to teach any of that stuff. They just want to they just want to emasculate us and take away any type of weaponry so that we would be vulnerable to their deceptions. Verse 5, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Whoever abides in me, I in him, he bears much fruit. He's not talking about your money. Having kids, training them in godliness, that's good fruit. Amen to that. And, uh, but he's talking about having some sort of outreach to get somebody some help. Getting somebody, now I wouldn't encourage you to be in a, a fentanyl uh, minister primarily because you're going to be discouraged going down to fentanyl at it. You need, to, you need to drop on over to an old folks home where they light up like a Christmas tree because someone's coming in to talk to them. Uh, you need to have a little bit of diversification in your life. I can't go to the jails all day long because all those guys that got eight million, yeah, man, I'm going to change the world with you, man. I'm going to be there at the deliverance center 24 years of it. How many people come here? Uh, about a handful or two. Uh, so you can't go all in and just jail ministry either. You got to have a little bit of ministry at your highways and byways in your family, at the gym. You, you got to have some divine appointments that God sends you, some people that are ripe and ready to get saved, that have been praying, that have been looking for the truth, but nobody's been able to articulate it and preach it so that they could get saved. You, you got to have a little bit of, you got to have a little bit of mixture. And, and you'll be able to keep going. You'll you abide in Jesus. You're going to bear much fruit. He'll teach you how, where to go. He'll lead you to the green pastures, the still waters. He says, for without me, you can do nothing. Once the ministry starts stalling, there's probably far too much of you and, and a lot less of Jesus than you think. You start trusting in your head knowledge. You start trusting in your wisdom. Sometimes you just trust in some things the way you used to do it. Sometimes you got by with some things because of mercy and grace. God will do amazingly merciful and graceful things. I led people to the Lord at the beginning after cussing some people out 40 minutes earlier. Literally giving, dropping all kinds of cuss words, trying to challenge them to a fight, willing to fight, not caring if I go to jail. Crazy. Uh, I got prayers answered that you can't believe. I'm sitting in Los Angeles. I was a ticket scalper. Had some beef with somebody that were over some tickets. They didn't like it. Uh, they couldn't do nothing about it. And they said that I robbed them. Some cop, he was, wanted to do everything right, and he was working his way up the ranks. He comes and arrests me. 
And I said, you got no case here? You're just going to arrest me and take me to jail on a felony? I said, where's the marks? I said, there they are right there. They're like, that's him, positively identifying. I had some tickets. I said, I'm a ticket. I'm scalping tickets. I got an I need tickets sign. I'm buying and selling. This doesn't mean they're their tickets. You didn't even ask them where they came from. You're not doing your job. He goes, oh, you tell it to the judge. Locks me up. I got a $50,000 bond. I'm there all day. It was Metallica. I learned not to sell tickets to Mount Metallica real fast at being born again. Uh, you're getting bumping into the devil at those places. I'm sitting in jail. I call my dad. His house in Nebraska is only worth $100,000. i am going to try to ask him to mortgage his house to get me out. I'm like, I'm going to be here for a long time. I finally come to my senses, and I start praying. I said, Lord, I apologize for what I said to those people. I'm sorry for being selfish. And I told that guy, I told him, the cop, I said, hey, man, I'm a Christian, man. I gave my life to Jesus, man. Don't put this on me. I'm, I'm trying to do my best here. I was real with him. And he goes, well, if you're a Christian, then God will vindicate you. I was still mad at him, didn't pay him much attention. And I start praying. About an hour later, a guy comes in and says, hey, you must be rich. So we saw on there, 6'4", 300. Uh, I was like, hey, you don't, look, you don't look crazy. I said, I'm not crazy. He goes, you want to tell me the story? I said, Phew. jumped right there, had some incredible favor with them. Uh, he said, I know the judge. He said, I'm going to try to call him to go to lunch. I'm going to see if I can get, or the, 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 the prosecutor, he said, I'm going to see if I can get this thrown out. I walked out of there at three o'clock in the afternoon. I didn't walk out the exit. I walked out the entrance. And when I was walking out the entrance, they were letting me go. I bump into the cop. And he goes, they're letting you go? He said, yep. They said, they're letting you out the front door? I said, yep. He goes, well, you must have been innocent. So the Lord is powerful when you'll pray. When, when, when you're newly uh, saved, you, you can get by with some stuff. But now the Lord, he's, he's holding you accountable for some more now. I had to let some stuff go. I used to know how to make all kinds of money. I got out of tickets, then I got into these ticket holders with the collector pins and traveling around the country and getting my buddy and his whole high school football team to come and sell these things and flying them out to NASCAR and Super Bowls and Final Fours and National Championship games. It was very lucrative, but, you know, there wasn't any permits for it. So, yeah, we'd lose one guy out of ten, and we'd pay for his bond, and there'd be a $500 fine maybe, and, and we'd just keep going. You'd lose one here or there. And the Lord was like, hey, and then I got arrested when I was in the, started the jail ministry 20 years ago. And they said, if you ever get arrested, you're out of here for two years, depending upon your crime. But, you know, uh, we're going we're gonna to tell you that you can't come in, maybe ever. So I get arrested in Miami. I told the guys, I said, hey, Miami's one of these cities they just let you out with your own OR. You just pay the court cost. This is how the system works, unless it's violence or drugs. I said, so don't bail me out. Whatever you do, just let me go through the system. I'll see you in the afternoon. The next, sure enough, I get arrested. I'm sitting there. Miami's crazy. People are fighting each other. It's psycho world in there. And the Lord's like, is this what I called you to do? Is this what I called you to do? And I'm like, oh, man, I, I got to let this go. I got to let this go. It was lucrative. Uh, am I hurting anyone selling licensed product? No, nah, not really, but it's against the law. The Bible said I'm supposed to obey man's law, and I wasn't. Sometimes the police don't care. It's no big deal. There's nothing to it. You can sell it right in front of them. They don't even ask you, but it doesn't matter. At one point, you got to go to another level. Now I was in that jail ministry. I, I had to pray. I said, okay, Lord, I got to let this go. I called him. I told him what happened. And uh, he said, okay, we can't have any of that happen again. That was in 2004. And so he, he, once you've been given much and you're plugged into the vine of Jesus Christ, there's some things he's got to prune. Hanging with your boys is a death trap. People that ain't saved can't be your boys no more. You can't do it. I used to try to do it, go over to my friend's house. I mean, literally, all oh, my boys, he's got a rim shop, dude. You need a six-inch lift on your car, man. You need some 34s on that car. I would leave under the influence of a spirit. I, I would think the next day I'd come to my senses like, dude, I'm married with three kids. What in the world do I need some rims on my truck? I've sold numerous trucks. You get hardly any money for any of that stuff. At best, 10 cents on the dollar or make it easier to sell, but it doesn't do anything. What was that? That's called spiritual influences. 
And you get around them too much, they'll tell you what they really what they really are like. And they're just like you used to be before you got saved. Sexual, deviant, carnal, if not indeed in their imaginations. And it'll come out over time once they get more familiar with you. Once that, that little protective shield of you coming righteous in the name of the Lord gets whittled on down, that stuff will jump on over. You've got to make some decisions. Otherwise, you can't, you can't make it. It's just how it works. Stuff will jump on you. Depression will jump on you. Anxiety will jump on you. And then the devil, once you're full of, of anxiety and fear, then he'll give you the remedy. And all oh, pot will work for about a year. But you're just getting loaded up with spirits. And you'll run into all kinds of people who smoke it and think they're just doing fine on it. They're oblivious. They're blind. The devil's got to raise up a few token people that don't get mental illness off it to keep the system going. Verse 9, as the Father loved me, I loved you. Abide in my love. Love is obedience. It's different. It's different than human love. Human love needs a little bit of respect. From male to female, it needs a little affection. From father to son, it needs, you know, some trust, some obedience. But according to the word of God, it's all obedience. Do not say you love me and do not do what I command. Most people don't even know what God commanded. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've written to you that my joy may remain in you and your joy may be full. You ran out. You, you got halfway depleted. He's telling you right here how not to run low, how not to get depleted. These things I've sent to you that my joy would remain in you, your joy would be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I loved you. Greater love has no one than this that he lay down his life for one of his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command. You're God's friend if you do whatever he commands. It doesn't say you just got born again and you're his friends. He says no when you do what he commands you to do. He said, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know his master's doing. But I have called you my friends. For all things I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. I chose you. Amen. He chose us. I didn't go to my high school tenure at reunion. My buddy is a jokester. He got in all kinds of trouble that night. But before that all spun out and went completely haywire he used to ask the people they would say we always hung together sophomore to senior year we, we and there's where's rick they said one of two things he's either in prison or he's doing something illegal he said no man he leads bible studies and they all laughed all of them laughed every one of them they thought it was a joke he was a jokester so they thought for sure it was a joke when god calls you he goes into his business First thing his business does, he's got to take some things out of you. I was angry. I was angry at everybody. People, why would I want someone else in my world? I can't hardly trust the friends I got. I can't hardly manage the people that I got in my life now. I don't need anyone else in my life. So everybody is just an opportunity. What can you bring to the table? You got business. You got jokes. I like jokes. These people that are funny, oh, you can, oh, you're welcome because I, I, I need a little bit of uh, taking my mind off the suffering of this insane world. But somebody always had to bring something. I never even had a conversation with a homeless person. I tried to give some, some money one time, and we rolled up to this guy. And he was pretty jacked up. It was in Los Angeles. We were feeling pretty good. We made a bunch of money on the Los Angeles Kings. Wayne Kretzky was playing. And we came up to him and said, hey, man, we didn't know how to talk to homeless people. I said, what do you got going tonight? Oh, we're going to give him some money. And, uh, you know, feeling kind of guilty for our lifestyle. And he goes, well, well, what do you mean? Like some sex? Man, I took like all the big bills, gave him like two bucks. Man, we took off. I said, man, I ain't got no time for this. I don't know. What, what are you talking about? Sex. And then God made me, when he whittled me down, a hot dog vendor right down on 7th Street in Jefferson. And then I started to get to know some people. I didn't, I was so, this is embarrassing. I said, well, I don't know where homeless people come from. Like, hey, yeah, you get kicked out, you're going to be out there. But I thought, well, you know, what do they just breed down here? Everyone has sex. We got a mom and dad that were homeless, and now you get raised up out here. I, mean, I had no idea. And then I got to know people over time. Because you get a lot of extra food, whatever you don't sell. I'd hook guys up. And 
And I was like, what? You, you, this happened to you? It was always something traumatic. One guy was the first guy I saw get born again and off the streets and get his son back. Crack came out in the 80s. He worked for the railroad. He had a good job. He buried his high school sweetheart. They had four kids. Next thing you know, crack came out. They would arrest you for shoplifting, and you, they didn't take you to jail. They would just write you this summons. Next thing you know, she's got four charges because she's trying to get this crack money. Next thing you know, she's got to go to jail. She's in jail, got like one year in jail. Some guard impregnates her. And he lost it. Somehow he had something to do with Phoenix. He said he came down here to kill himself. He said he picked up the first hooker he got. He said, hey, I'm going to do this with drugs until I die. You can do these drugs with me. But the minute you tell me to stop killing myself or to do less, you got to get out of here. These are the rules. He could never do enough drugs to kill himself. 16 years on those streets. And, and he became my right-hand guy. And all I would do is just, at first he just worked for me because he needed the money. And he just needed 20 bucks. And I knew he went right to the dope for the minute he got that money. And, but I would break down the word. I'd read the word. There, there was sometimes where God would send me some people at the beginning. They were ripe. They were ready to get saved. They were right on that edge. And God was building my faith. But then he was taking me down there and saying, okay, now we got to dismantle the lies of the wicked one. Now we got to, now we got to rebuild with the individual. Now we got to... Now, we, we got to do it lovingly. We got, we got to take down these lies. We got to take down these lies, and we got to fill it back up with truth. And it took a while. And then I saw some more people. Some people come and go. It's just a seed. There's some watering. But I saw how the system worked. So God had called me into ministry. I left that other business, started getting some deliverance, didn't know what deliverance was, didn't see it in the church, I didn't see it on channel 21, I didn't know what was going on, so I'm not going to put myself out in any, any way that could be interpreted negatively back in the day, so I don't tell anybody about it. But it was now I knew later in life when I started going through deliverance and I got into deliverance ministry what God was doing. God's been helping you for years, but it's a war. And so it's a war from God trying to help you to the enemy coming in to block you. But what's he trying to do? How does he block you? With lies. And then he's got to get you out on your own. When you're depressed and you're mulling over your, your sorrows, when you check out of your sorrows to do drugs or alcohol, or you refuse to submit to God and you're just living the sexual deviant life in the way that you want to pursue riches, then you're taking yourself out of the vine and slowly you start to wither up. Oh, he said, every, bear, every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. Oh, that's scary. I'm going to kill this fly. I literally got a demonic fly. That's the same fly that was messing with Barack Obama and Mike Pence. Some sort of demon fly. Matthew chapter 12, 22. Then one was brought who was demon-possessed, blind and mute. And he healed him. And the blind and mute both spoke and saw, and the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? And when the Pharisees heard it, they said, He doesn't cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city that's divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. And then how, well is king, how will his kingdom stand? He's got a kingdom. Satan's got a kingdom. Well, if he's got a kingdom, I, I got to stay out of it. I, I can't be dealing with no satanic kingdom. And they really should have taught this. The first time you went to church, they should have said, hey, not giving you a little smelly candle to smell good or a coffee cup that says Jesus loves you. They should have took you in a room and said, hey, this is what we need to teach you. Ephesians chapter 6, you're not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Rulers of darkness and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly realms. Demons are the worker bees that can get in your life, get in your finances, and terrorize you. Satan is running this whole thing as the president of the whole organization. Satan has a kingdom. It is established on this earth. The minute you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you need to come out from among them. 
and be separated. And then Christ will shine on you. If you refuse to come out from among them and from those worldly thoughts and those worldly ways and the whole system, then God will keep shining on you to try to lure you out with his love and his mercy and his power, showing you great miracles, but ultimately it's going to take your free will decision to use the power of God to come out because you can't come out of it without the power of God. You can't do it. It's impossible. You can't fight with a, a spiritual entity and a spiritual force with physical human power. You have to do it with supernatural power. And Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The power comes to be a witness, but you can't witness if you're among them. You, over time, will become a hypocrite. You will become despised. You will become rejected. You will actually give a bad name to the Lord Jesus because the kingdom of God is about power and God is a victorious king of kings. And we need to be able to represent him well. So it's going to take you coming out. Oh, it's, it's, it's powerful. There's, there's power to it. In order to leave that, that business, I knew I couldn't leave. I tried to leave on my own ticket scalping as it was lucrative. Now it's, it's all ran by StubHub, and everybody's a ticket scalper. But before that, and when the Internet was just getting started, I mean, basically it was phone lines and calling up, and people would come down to the arenas and buy tickets. And uh, it was lucrative, and I didn't have any education. I didn't want to go to college. So I said, hey, I'll try to see play some college ball. I don't want to get no degree. I think at the end, I think it was sociology. I mean, I whittled that thing down to, hey, I'd go to the dumbest dude on the team. Like, what's your major? You're like, okay, let me get in that because what I need to do as least as possible because I'm going to make all the money I ever wanted selling tickets. And hey, it did. It, it paid off. All, everybody in it became a multimillionaire that didn't become a crackhead or a gambler or shot and killed. They all became wealthy because it was like taking candy from a baby. Nobody thought ahead to just go ahead and buy some Suns tickets when it went on sale in the summer. But if you knew when they went on sale, you, you could buy up all these tickets. But God was saying, he didn't tell me to leave that. He said, I'm not there. If God tells you he's not somewhere, then you need to come out from among them. If you don't come out from among them, then you become a kingdom divided, a man divided. And then you're not able to stand against what? The schemes of the devil, the lies of the enemy. Be not unwise against the wiles of the devil, that you would be able to stand in the day of evil. You can't stand in the middle of them. you got to come out from them to be able to stand, to be able to endure the temptations and the allure of the spiritual world. It, it's a powerful force. It gets people to believe lies like you can't believe. Every drug addict uh, down there, they were all on heroin down, downtown. And they were always like, man, this is probably my last month. Man, I'm going to be up off this street. I got an aunt in Kentucky. I'm going to be heading back. She's got a little farm. She can always use me, paint her house. And they never went nowhere. And then they all had this weird little thing that I noticed. The minute they got high and they blew their money, because on Saturday they could make more money and it was a shorter day. And then they would always like have this weird trash harvesting deal or this delusion to justify the money they just threw up in their veins. It was weird. Oh, it doesn't make sense when you get involved with demons. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because he puts delusions on people, strong delusions, witchcraft. You know how many people, when they get involved in witchcraft, they begin to believe that this force is somehow greater than God's power? God will deliver you out of witchcraft as easy as coming up out of a masturbation habit, which 90% of men picked up in their teenage years. He'll deliver you from it when what? When you come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what it takes, you to come to the knowledge of the truth and to believe it and be willing to come out from among it and trusting God's power. The curse, the hex, the vex, the voodoo, all that stuff, it has to come upon you with a cause. So sometimes when he's coming at you, all he's trying to do is get you to take an offense with other people. He's taking an offense with the Lord. Boy, he's got you hook, line, and sinker. It went into effect, and it landed on you. Then whatever they prayed upon that will then begin to implement itself upon you but if you don't take the offense against anyone and you love people and you forgive whatever god gives you you give it away then the curse doesn't come without a cause now there's some things you got to get out of you i helped a guy tuesday and he was under such a strong delusion he didn't know that he was jehovah witness i said you repent of being a jehovah witness he said no nah, man i didn't i said what you didn't know that was a cult he goes what i thought it was a denomination of christianity 
I said, no, their Jesus is the reincarnation of Michael the archangel. That Jesus ain't saving nobody. That's a delusion. That's a fake Jesus. He goes, yeah, we left the church when my father's house burned down. None of them helped us. The people that came and helped us were other Christians from other churches who didn't even know us. And so my dad left. I said, ooh, your house burning down was the best thing that ever happened to you. Long story short, he can't prosper now. And he's, he was in a financial jam. I said, when these spirits come in, that Jesus will bounce all around where you think you're close to Jesus because a Jesus that you got to feel all the time is not Jesus Christ of the Bible. I don't read, I, I read that the Holy Ghost would come and fall upon him, but I don't read that it just every day they were just feeling Jesus. It says these things I've written that you would know that you have eternal life. They would begin to get in his presence. They would begin to worship and God would come down. And obviously there's a tangible presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm not knocking it. But all these people that got to feel it, you, you, you get susceptible to the Kundalini spirit. He's got some feelings for you coming and going. He's got tickling in your spine. There's some chick that's so full of witchcraft says she's a Christian, writes Christian books. She, she says, oh, there's water tingling down your spine. You feel that water spingling down? Dude, that's a spirit coming upon you. She's invoking spirits. You got to have some discernment. When you're going to get delivered, there has to be some righteous fight within you. You have to come to a moment of clarity that I've been held down by the enemy. I've been held back from fulfilling the call of which God had on my life to love people who are unlovable and to actually get my love to them when they don't deserve that love. And that's what God was doing. He was whittling me down, having, having some love for people. I remember where it got weird. I, I, I called the guy who was homeless. He, he never got saved. And I, I'd call him when it would be a week off and it'd be a, they'd go on the road. There'd be a week homestand. I'd call the guy, hey, how you doing, man? You need anything? And I was like, man, this has gotten weird. This isn't doing it because I should do it and trying to keep tabs on him so he'll show up to work when the next homestand comes. This is out of something coming out of me that I never had in me before. God was putting it in me. He was putting it into me when I was doing the things that he was calling me to do. He said every kingdom divided. He says, therefore, they shall be, oh, okay. He says, how then will his kingdom stand if he's divided? If I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by what? The Spirit of God. That's how demons are cast out then. That's how they're cast out now. He said, then surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then he'll plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me. There's many ministers that are against Jesus Christ. They're all over on YouTube. And it starts making sense because they start nitpicking some people that are truly off. And then they begin to scoop them all in one bunch. And they got the right doctrine, but they don't know about the Holy Spirit. They don't know that demons can get in 100%. Not 99.999, 100% demon spirits get in every human being. You know, a lot of them get in there, and they come in through sin. Is there grace? Let's just say, I wouldn't even argue with me, with you. If you get saved, they're all gone. But what happens is your mind's not renewed. Your actions aren't holy and sanctified. You still got this flesh, which is deceitfully wicked. They would just slowly just start getting in you the next hour, the next day, the next week. So you could say that's a case but I'll go and look at anybody that's saved. There's going to be some spirits there. But the powerhouse spirit is gone. The spirit that blinded you to the mind, your mind, from the gospel, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the wrath to come for those sons of disobedience. That's the greatest deliverance you'll, you'll ever have. And so everything else is in the bag, but you got to go down through the walk with Jesus, being purified, staying connected to him, Cutting things off, letting God prune some things, being faithful, not grumbling, not complaining along the road as it, start, it gets a real thin life. I've given my number to a hundred and some people. They don't call me. They don't call me. These are people that I helped. These are people that I got deliverance. I said, here's my number. You call me. I don't get prank calls. I don't get no kind of calls from them. 
Because the enemy is smart. He works with the infrastructure. And sometimes you feel like a million bucks when, when you leave, but then there's some other issues you got to deal with. Oh, there's some things you got to get rid of. An ill-gotten treasure has no value. You've been robbing people, cheating people, deceiving people, manipulating people. You're going to have to ask God about that money because it all belongs to the Lord. I don't believe in that tithing is a New Testament principle. I don't believe that. It says, what do we do with these Gentiles? Uh, keep them away from sexual morality, things strangled, uh, keep themselves polluted from things polluted with idols and sexual morality. It doesn't say, and then tithe. I don't believe that. I believe in the New Testament, it all belongs to the Lord. It's all his. And so the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We remain in the vine. He'll tell you what to do with the money. Nobody should give under compulsion, but you should give according to what God told you to give before you got there because he knew where you were going. He was preparing your way. He had put it on your heart. So you got to ask the Lord about that money now. I heard God's voice with all that ticket scalping money and... Uh, I heard God's voice. I left church. I knew it was a good church. It was a Holy Ghost church. And, uh, and I heard God's voice. Just give it all away and start fresh. He didn't tell me to sell my properties. I owned a couple pieces of property. There was some stuff you do is legit. I bought and sold some stuff. Uh, he didn't tell me to get rid of it. He said, the cash, just get rid of it. I wouldn't listen. I said, oh, no, I need this money to invest, to start a business. Man, what am I going to do? I need this. Two failed businesses later, I started from scratch. So you, you, you need to, if you've been, you're a hooker, you're an Instagram whore, you're, you're an a OnlyFans hooker, that's all prostitution. Anything you're doing, you're showing some boobs, some butt for money, that's prostitution. I hate to break it to you. Anything that you allure a man with your sexual character in any way, shape, or fashion is harlotry. And you made all this money, oh, I was selling lip balm. Yeah, because your butt was out 15 times a week. You better ask God what to do with the money because the Bible says an ill-gotten treasure has no value. You don't need to give it to me. I don't need your money. You don't need to give it here. We'll be just fine. But you better find out who, with the Lord what he wants you to do. Maybe he tells you to keep it. I'm not God. I don't know. He was, moves in mysterious ways. But you better surrender. When you were a drug dealer, you, you were a crim. I, I, this pastor actually called me. I helped two or three people from his church get delivered. And the dude was currently making porn. And he, wanted, he was making it of himself and just downloading it on, the, on some site. I said, dude, you, you want me to cast out spirit? He goes, dude, I didn't know making porn was wrong. I'm making it with myself. My bro, anything you do with sexuality is... is, is Outside of marriage is fornication. It's perversion. There's no sex allowed on planet Earth. Not sex with yourself. Oh, yeah, I don't think about apple trees. Dude, come on, man. You, 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 no, it ain't going to work. Well, I do it to take off stress. I, I got 70-some-year-old women sitting in my office saying, well, I just need it to go to sleep. It's a, it's a stress relaxer. I'm like, you got to flee. Any type of sexual stimulation and sexual pleasure, you need to control your body in sanctification and honor. This puts you in a position, oh, I've been doing it for 100 years. Well, now you're going to have to trust God to make things new because he wouldn't ask you to do something he wouldn't give you the power to do. And he says, one must control his body in sanctification and honor. Only sex that was permissible was between a man and a woman that were married. So Jesus didn't deal with that. I know a guy was preaching at 17, and he was a little young kid, and the house moms, he'd stay at the pastor's house, and the mom would come in, and he's like, dude, I wasn't going to have one of these ladies seeing me with some morning erection. I, at 17, I spoke to my, my body, and I said, stop doing that. So then he was getting married at 34 years old. He's on a prayer retreat with me and Steve Binion, and we're going up to Payson, and he goes, man, I, I, I'm getting married. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we know, we're encouraging. And he goes, yeah, but I got a problem, man. Man, my stuff is just dormant. I mean, there's nothing down there. I mean, I spoke to it at 17. I'm 34. 
Steve said, man, what you need is a little echonesia and some ginseng. I said, no, no, you don't need echonesia. You don't need ginseng. You honored God. When you see your wife and her glory, everything's going to work just the way that God designed it because you honored him. And I know it works because now he's got numerous kids. <laughs> so, so it's real. It's real. But if you want to keep luring around and playing with it, you know, no pun intended, uh, you're, you're going to suffer some consequences and some entanglements. This weird, it's a weird phenomenon. I see these beautiful girls that come in here, and all they do is deal with these knucklehead, wannabe gangsters, flashy money guys with 22-inch rims, and this is your fifth guy, third, two babies with two other ones. I'm like, well, what? Man? well I kind of like bad boys. And I said, no, that's a spirit of rebellion. There's something in you who wants to be rode down to the ground and, and where you have no hope and no trust in men and you're, you're old and you're, you're mad at everybody and your kids are all estranged from their fathers. This is a demonic setup. This is a delusion. This is an ungodly fantasy and fascination that the, the, these men will fulfill you uh, as a woman and, and, and be that man and change because you love them and change because you're going to bring them to church. This is a delusion. It's hard, it's hard to explain to people's satanic delusions because it's webbed in your mind. It's webbed in your emotions, and it's got to all come out of there. The Great Commission, Matthew chapter 26, 16, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee on the mountain, which Jesus had appointed to them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and he spoke to them. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. You're supposed to teach people to obey all the commandments of God. Well, that's Old Testament. No, this is New Testament, Matthew chapter 26, verse 16. And he says, my commandments aren't a burden for those that, that, that love me. It's hard. It's hard. I, 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 I was easy to get over on people. People are weak-minded. People are very, very weird. Like rich people used to literally like get out of nice cars and just sell them a couple hundred dollars worth of tickets, and they just hand you like 400. Like, dude, you, they couldn't even count. It was weird. I'm like, okay, and, you know, back then I was like, well, what do I do? How much is this a tip? This seems a little large for a full tip. I, I mean, I, God was telling me, don't do that no more. Count on their change back. At first he, did, he knew I wasn't ready to leave that business. First he had to see if I would be obedient before he would even allow me to be delivered from it. If I wouldn't listen to his voice, there's no way I could be delivered from that, bu that business because I wouldn't even know where to go, how to act, what to do with my life. So I had to be systematically, uh, have the word of God implanted into me, and then that comes by obeying God and doing it. And then, hey, there was tests. People would just give me free tickets, and I'm like, man, you know, is this right? These guys think I'm going to be sitting with them. We're going to be drinking beers. They're going to see somebody I sold those tickets to. They're going to find. And then at one point, it was like, this isn't a righteous life. This is just too riddled with too much temptation. Some jobs, if there's too much temptations, you just got to get out of it. We got to go into the world and we got to make disciples. Matthew chapter, or Mark rather, 16, verse 14. Later he appeared to the leaven. He sat at the table. He rebuked them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. God will rebuke you for your unbelief. He's not happy with it. He's not happy with hardness of heart. He said, because they did not believe when they seen him after he had risen. Then he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. It's amazing to me that there's probably some people in here, you ain't been water baptized, and now you're looking to get delivered. He said, he who believes and is baptized. Was the thief on the cross baptized? No, Jesus didn't say, boys, get us some water up here. You know, let, let, let's shower him up so he can go on to glory. He said, no, today you will be with me in paradise. But following God, you do what God commands. Baptism is supposed to be a, a, a moment of reflection for the rest of your life. When you were baptized as a little child, it meant nothing. 
You had a ritual. You had a routine. It made no difference in any spiritual way whatsoever. If anything, it would be harmful at certain demonic churches. But it did nothing for you for God. The Bible's clear with the Ethiopian eunuch. He says, hey, there's water right there after hearing the gospel. What hinders me from being baptized? He said, if you believe with all your heart, then you may be baptized. So he who believes and is baptized is saying this is a follower, someone that's following Jesus. This is, this is a true believer, not someone that just, oh, I'm going to just trust Jesus died for my sins. I told the story numerous times. I, I, I preach to everybody, when I, especially those big events. You know, I was saved. I was still preaching. And, man, I'd bump into hookers. They all show up there. And, and I would get to preaching. And they, numerous hookers have told me, but Jesus already paid for all my sins. Like, I'm biblically illiterate or stupid. He's already paid for all my sins. I already got Jesus for my sins. And I said, no, the Bible says without any repentance, there is no salvation. You have to turn. I was I did that when I got saved, when I was 14, dummy. And they'd walk away. It's happened numerous times, or they'll cuss me out. That happened up here at the Circle K. I got cussed out by that hooker. God bless them. Jesus loved them. This is one of women's. Men are supposed to take care of women. Women are the weaker vessels. It's physically, uh, emotionally, they're easily deceived. That's why the Bible says Adam, sin came to the world through Adam. Adam outright knew he was sinning. He did it anyway. Eve was deceived. That's why Paul said there was order in the church. Men were supposed to take a... Uh, protect women. It says right there, it's the weaker vessels. You're supposed to honor them. You're supposed to take care of them. That's, that's, that's what our job is. The women are saved different. It says if you're a woman and you bear children and you lodge str strangers, if you wash the feet of saints, uh, if you've shown hospitality, you'll be saved. Men are supposed to be the preachers to go into the world. And, and hey, there's some women that go out and do a great job. They, they've stepped up. They, they didn't have children. And they do a great job. But the reality is, men, we're supposed to do it. And that's why when I look at any man that's got a dysfunctional thing, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure your wife is crazy. You drove her crazy. You came in, you never got rid of the crazy. The crazy's been growing. Yeah, but you're the guy that's supposed to help. And, and women will grow way faster than men. They're way more spiritually sus uh, susceptible to the Holy Spirit. I remember coming in the first time I preached the jails in Australia. It was the opposite side of Tent City. I mean, there's some sisters in there that look like linebackers. I'm mean mugging me like, this is my pod. Who are you coming in here? And I, I thought, man, how's this going to go, this altar call? Every one of them wept, 100%. Like, it's like 100% they all come to the altar. No, no one sits there with pride. Like, I don't know, man, this ain't my church. This ain't my home church. Who is this guy? You know, they, they are wrestling with all this machismo. They don't have that. They're just calm. I couldn't believe it. It was a joy to go in there. You can't go in there unless you have a, another woman. Two men can't go into the women's, which is a good rule. So I would go in there with this lady named Betty Jo Rogers. And when, when her partner was, would be ill or couldn't make it out of town, I'd show up. It was a highlight of uh, jail preaching. So, men, we got to do our thing. We got to do our thing. We got to rise. You got to forgive your wife. You, you, you got to forgive your husband, right? It's a, hard, it's a hard life. The Bible says, hey, if you're married, you, you're married, you get saved, and your wife doesn't get saved, she wants to stay, let her stay. She wants to go, let her go. Uh, you're, you get saved, your husband's not saved, he wants to stay, stay. So it says, man, that's, that's it. God's got to give you some supernatural power. He's got to give you some supernatural wisdom. He's got to start answering prayers. That husband, that wife's got to see the power of God. This is good. This isn't a bondage. This isn't a religious uh, sect and a cult. There's power here. They should tangibly be able to see the power moving in the house of their house and in their finances. I prayed for this guy. I'm not kidding. I'm not Mr. Big Boy, but I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I do the work. I, I went through the process. Lori just met the guy. I, he's a guy that works for us. He was down in the dumps, had no job. I said, dude, let's just pray. Now for the last two weeks, he goes, dude, I got nine, ten jobs. Dude, I don't even know how to deal with all this. I believe that not all glory to God. He answered the prayer. He loves the person. But, hey, somebody needed to pray that believed. I believe people that pray, that know God, if you pray for things that are good, that would glorify God, it shall be done. If you don't doubt and if you don't have unbelief, 
If you have doubt and unbelief, you're like a wave tossed to and fro. You shouldn't think you get anything from God. So I believe God, that he wants to help people. He, he wants to show his love for each individual. I love you. I'll provide for you. I got a place for you. But we got to be the ones to pray. We got to be the ones to stand in the gap where things are not in order. Wrapping it up, the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 16, verse 14 through 18. So he appears to him, tells us to go into the world, preach it to every creature. He says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he says this, he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. So there's a sign. Sign going to church, sign a card. Go to the Bible study, not on here. In my name, they'll cast out demons. That always was perplexing to me. I knew people had demons, man. You get around these jail guys when they relapse, these demons manifest on them. It's a weird sight, man. It's, it's something overtakes them. They become like their normal selves, in shape, alpha male. What, they, they get emasculated instantly with these spirits. I knew it was demons, but I didn't know how to cast them out. So I was perplexed with this. This would be a sign of a believer. And notice every nitpicker, naysayer on YouTube that, that doesn't cast out demons, or they'd say rather Christians can't have demons, they don't cast them out of nobody. Not one of them can you find and will say, yeah, and I cast out a demon here or there. They've never done it. Why? Because deliverance is for the children of God only. It's not for the unbeliever. It's for the children whom the Son sets free will be free. So the Son has to do it. And so first sign is they'll cast out demons, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll take up serpents, if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm them, if they lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. There's a sign to your life, and it's not according to your intellect, your intelligence, your family status, your, your, your whatever, it's according to God's will as you being a son of God. It has to do with you plugging into God, cutting some things out. In order to get truly plugged in, there's got to be some sacrifice. If you haven't found him yet, if you haven't met him yet, if you haven't been able to overcome yet, if you haven't been able to break through yet, it's going to take you to do something that you haven't done yet. By definition, that's what it takes. Forgiving people, this preacher was off the hook, this old guy. He was in there and he taught about forgiveness. There was, I'm not kidding. There, there's a thousand people in that Baptist church down the street. A thousand. It was, they were lined up. They were lined up. Oh, demon fly coming at me. You don't want me to tell this story about this 87-year-old powerhouse preacher. And the pastor that had him said, hey, I'm having this man preach because he was at a pastor's convention. I was at and he changed my life. They were lined up, I'm not kidding, a hundred deep on the sides. They couldn't get to the altar. It was so full. And he told them, hey, you got to forgive everyone. And, and no matter what they did, you got to forgive them. That's what God says. He doesn't have any ifs, ands, or buts, or maybes in it. He says, you got to do it. And then he says this, after he led them in a prayer to forgive them, he says, now if the devil brings it up, which he will, you got no right to bring it up. Joseph when he forgave his brothers for trying to kill him and then sell him into slavery, when he forgave them, he never brought it up. They had fear that he was going to bring it back up, but he never brought it up. So if you truly forgive someone, you can't let the devil try to entice you to bring it back up. You, you know, it's already been forgiven. It's done with. doesn't mean you will be absent-minded and can't remember it. You just won't dwell on it. You just won't relive it. Are there some people that you got to get away from? Yeah. He said, every branch of me that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it would be even more fruitful. So there are some people that you do got to get away with. I'm not telling you who that is or get away from, rather. I'm not telling you who that is, but the Holy Spirit will make it known to you. And then there was only one thing he didn't know, and God bless him, is spirits come in through unforgiveness. That's how I ended up here. And the devil was so smart. I knew to forgive. I'd forgiven people. But I always forgave people according to my own understanding. I, I would have some kind of justification. I was like, man, this guy don't know anything about the Bible. I said, man, he's had a bad life. Man, I just need to, I need to give him some grace and mercy. Uh, another time, I said, well, you know, yeah, I can kind of see his side, you know. And then he got so far. 
There was no going back. Yeah, I got to forgive him. But then I had to forgive someone that knew everything I knew in the Bible, had done a lot of things for the, in, for the kingdom of God, things above and beyond that I had never done. So I held him to another standard. And what happened, I would forgive him, and slowly my, pro- my, troubles, or my troubles would compound and get worse, and I'd slowly take it back. And this happened about three or four times where I was living in a delusion that I had forgiven him, but I was already down and I had negative emotions about him. Every time I thought about him, every time I thought about the business, I had negative emotions. Oh, it rooted up so the lip service didn't count. The the Bible says there's many people, they worship me with their lips. Oh, that's what I was doing, lip service. I came in here. 14 years ago, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, like boom, like electricity. I got to forgive this person. I got to forgive them. And then once I forgave them, I realized whatever happened to me in that circumstance was the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life because it allowed me to go where I was going and where I was operating, where I am right now. If I wouldn't have passed the test, if I wouldn't have been obedient, if I wouldn't have had that challenge, then I wouldn't have broke through. It was there to test you. Oh, was the enemy on the other side? I guarantee you he was, and he was betting you would fail. He was betting you'd quit. He was betting that you would keep that offense, and you'd stay in bondage. You'd stay on his side. Oh, but it was a test. And if you do what's right, you pass the test, and you come out of that miry pit of deception. Hating yourself is a miry pit of deception. Looking at yourself according to the way the world saw you and judged you and criticized you and critiqued you is a delusion in the miry pit of deception. You need to forgive yourself so God can go into operation and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus, that he can work through you with the power of the Holy Spirit to make disciples of all nations. And I've seen all kinds of people do good things. I, I, the, the guy that led me to one of my ministry, me and Mike, they were one of our ministry partners. This kid was a knucklehead. And that's not even saying anything insulting. That's a kind analysis of this guy and all of a sudden one day he's just singing songs for jesus and i'm kind of like okay he's got on a little jesus tune today and i'm not paying any mind to it but the thing lasts about two or three weeks two or three weeks into it i said hey what's going on what was happening in your life he goes man i found a good church man i said really he goes yeah man i'm just encouraged i'm in the word of god and I said, and I said, he goes, I'm serving in the church. And I'm like, well, what do you do? He said, I'm a catcher. I said, what the heck is a catcher? He said, I catch people that fall when my pastor prays for them and they go under the anointing. I said, oh, man, I got to see this place because it started making sense. I wasn't familiar with catchers. I wasn't familiar with people falling down under the power of the Holy Spirit. But I saw somebody's life that was changed. I saw somebody that God had put a new song in his heart. I saw somebody that it didn't just last two or three days. It was keeping on going on. I knew he had a tough life. He had baby mamas and child supports coming in multiple different directions and, and confiscation of his wages and all these things. And nothing was getting him down like it used to. Oh, he came up out of the miry pit of deception. Anyway, that, that guy became still one of my good friends, that pastor, to this day. Me and Mike seen the most powerful deliverance p- teaming up with him. And uh, Tijuana, Mexico, the most powerful anointing of God we ever seen. Uh, more powerful than I've ever even seen on TV. And uh, so, hey, somebody's changed life was the spark. That's the spark to, to see some opportunities to change life. How do you change you change by having some godly sorrow. To have truly godly sorrow, you can't be blaming everyone. Did everyone play a role? Yeah, I'm sure they did. It takes two to tango. But reality is you begin to release grace. You begin to repent of your sins. You can't repent for other people's sins. They got to do that themselves. And you begin to repent for your own sins. Then you, then you begin To have a little more revelation, you should have some by now. Hey, there's some spirits. There's some things that if you haven't been able to shake them off by praying, by fasting, by reading your word, if you never prayed and you never fasted and you never read your word, uh, I I would start with that. 
But if you've been praying and you've been fasting and you've been reading your word and you haven't been able to break through, then by definition, there's something that's attached itself. How does it attach itself? By continue rebellion. Over time, he gets some kind of spiritual tentacles. Sometimes through the bloodline, there's some kind of weird tentacles that come down, like that spirit that was messing with this guy's money where he couldn't see some things, completely blinded him from the family being in a cult. Those were some sins passed down from the forefathers in preceding generations. But he was suffering the same ill effects his father was suffering. And hey, and then you, you know what's the devil? You just tell him no. You ain't got to yell at him. We used to do that here 14 years ago. Um, we used to get to, yeah, devil, you are. No need to do it now. No need to have your voice go hoarse. If you yell... I'm not against it, but hey, it says you speak to the mountain and the mountain will be removed. You, in the name of Jesus, demons will flee. You need to speak the name of Jesus. Who are you going to speak it to? You're not just speaking it into the atmosphere. You're speaking back to the enemy, which has made an entanglement on you. There was bitterness in me. There was an entanglement of bitterness and vengeance still in me. And it was blocking my ability to have joy. I walked out of the deliverance center. All of a sudden, everything was brighter. Still the same bad neighborhood of 11th Street and Indian School, but it just seemed way more optimistic. I went home. There was no tossing and turning and stewing. I went right to bed. There, there, there's tangible facts to deliverance. There's some facts to it. If you're getting delivered for some, from something, there's some facts that you should be free. If something left, there should be some freedom. If something left, you should be able to do something you couldn't do before. If something was holding you back, there's ability to do or to believe something that you couldn't believe before. There, was some, there becomes some ability to have some spiritual discipline in your life. Right. I'll show you how to do it. We'll just, we'll just repent from your heart. Not complicated. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We come to you. We know that you're our ever-present help in our time of need. We thank you for the covenant that you made with us when we were born again, that you would never leave us. You never left me, Lord. Thank you so much for never leaving me, Lord. A lot of people left me, but you never left me. Thank you. You never forsook me, Lord. You never turned your back on me, never once, Lord. Thank you so much. And then you made a promise that you would finish what you began. There was a work that you were doing in my life when I first got born again. You opened my eyes and my heart to the gospel. You put love in my heart for you, Lord. You put love in my heart for other people, Lord. And I know now, Lord, something entangled itself. I've been ineffective at getting my love to people. I've been over-processing it. I've been over-analyzing it. I've been trapped with all kinds of worries and concerns of the world. I've been dealing with some internal strife. I've been dealing with a critical spirit. And Lord, I want to be free so that you can finish what you began. I'm asking for the Holy Spirit to deliver me tonight. I want to be free. I want to I want to be able to just sit like I used to sit with you in the morning and read the Bible and walk away from that table with a great expectation and hope for good things. Lord, I, I want to go into that miraculous where you put relationships back together where, where offenses and friction just falls to the ground and we get together like nothing was, was ever a problem. Lord, I want to bump into people who are ready. They want to hear more about the Word of God. They want to they want to receive Jesus. I want to bump into some people that need to be set free from demonic spirits. I want to bump into somebody and believe for their healing and their broken body to prove that you're God. But Lord, in order to do that, I got to apologize. I got a lot of evil desires, Lord. I've had vengeance this week. I've had lust. I've had all kinds of corrupt thoughts. I've been blaming a bunch of people for my problems. And, Lord, I can't change any of them, but, Lord, I know, Lord, that you can change me, and I want to change. Please forgive me of my sins. So sorry when I went back to drinking. I don't, I don't want to get brawling and mocking and dying, Lord. I, I got to get away from that, Lord. I, I'm so sorry, Lord. I've, I've been entangling myself with, 
with relationships with men or relationships with women. I, I've been leading some on. I've been playing around on the Internet. I, I, I've been doing what I know I shouldn't do, Lord. I've been watching things, godless things. Have mercy on my soul, Lord. I've got some offense with the church. I've got to get clear. I, got, I put people on a pedestal. I put them on a position where they, it was their job because of their position to fix me and to help me and to come down and answer all my questions. And when they didn't or couldn't, I took an offense with them. I'm so sorry for taking offense with men and women of God who are just trying to help people. I forgive them when they failed. I forgive them when they let me down. But, Lord, I repent of taking that offense, Lord, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I've been trusting in my riches, Lord. I, I can feel fear about what might happen to the economy. But, Lord, I believe that, Lord, you protect me. And every dollar that I'm supposed to have, if I listen to you, you'll show me how to protect it. And uh, if it goes, then you'll just supply my needs daily. I can trust you. I can't trust in uncertain riches. So please forgive me for doing that. Please forgive me, Lord, of of ill-gotten gains when I lied to people. I told them half-truths. That's lies. That's manipulation, Lord. I'm sorry when I preyed upon their vulnerabilities so that I could get the sale or I could get a commission or I could get rid of the car. Lord, I apologize for those things, Lord. I was to esteem people better than myself, and Lord, that wasn't a part of my business, Lord. I repent of that right now in Jesus' name. I know that you'll bless me. I don't have to trust in my own skills. I don't have to trust in my own craftiness. I, I got to trust you, Lord. Have mercy on my soul. I forgive my mom and dad. They didn't know you, Lord. They didn't know how to train me in the word of God. I know I suffered for it. They suffered as well. I forgive my mom and dad. I repent of the rebellion that I had against my mother and father. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. I'm forgiving myself. Tonight I get a second chance. Tonight I want to fight the good fight of faith. I want to fight the good fight of faith to believe that I can be free. To believe that you can make things new. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this in your name. Amen. If that's you, oh, we got a few. Yep. You can come on down to the front. We're not going to be here long. Come on down. The Holy Ghost will touch you. You can line up between that black mat and that carpet. We just This is your move. You've you, you got to break free now from your, your comfort zone. And we're going to pray for you. We ain't going to be here long. It's going to be a quick <coughs> night. The Holy Ghost is going to do what he wants to do. And you can go home free. Thank you, Lord. We want to be free, Lord. I can't be caught up and be categorized with the sexual immoral. I can't go home as one that gets his prayers chopped down because I fight with my wife or I fight with my husband. I, I can't go home living a lie. I can't do it. I don't want to go home sick. I don't want to go home with diseases. I don't want to go home with any of that. I want to be healed tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that touches each one of these people tonight. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing that breaks the yoke. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord, that you soften our hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the victory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the victory that's in Christ Jesus. Now, devil, you're a trespasser. We command you to come out right now. You are a trespasser. Come out right now. Doubt and unbelief. We command you to come out right now. Doubt and unbelief. You come out of the people right now. Thank you, Lord. Doubt and unbelief. Come out of there. You tell him to go now. He'll leave. Doubt and unbelief. You come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. I'm not living like a rebel. I'm not living like a rebel. I'm not living as an addict. I'm not living as a double-minded person, unstable in all his ways. I stand in the firm in the word of God right now. Come out of there right now. Timidity, you come out right now. Spiritual timidity. I command you in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. Voices in his head. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Every word curse that was ever spoken over this man, I command you to come out right now. Stronghold of word curses. I root you out right now in Jesus' name. I root you out and I command you to come out. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Come out of there right now. 
That stronghold of deception, you come out of there right now. Every spirit that came down through the bloodline, I command you to come out of his mind right now. Come out of that mind right now. All that perversion that attached themselves to him, all that depression, I command you to come out. Come out of there. 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 Stop choking him in the name of Jesus. Stop choking him. Come out of there right now. Anger at himself. Depression. I command you to come out of there right now. Come out of there. In the name of Jesus, I command you, you've got to fight him. If you don't tell him to go, he doesn't have to go. you got to go. you got to tell him you got to go in the name of Jesus. All the anxieties and fears, you have to go right now. All the fears of the unknown. All the fears of failure. I believe. I'm singly minded tonight. I believe. The Lord Jesus Christ is with me. Come out right now. He blesses all those who believe. Of Jesus, come out of there. Go ahead. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there. All that exhaustion. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Physically exhausted. Come out of there right now. Physical exhaustion. Mental exhaustion. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Keep going. You got him going. Keep coming out of my life. Come out of there. In the name of Jesus, leave. Come out of there. Leave my home. You leave my family. You leave me. You leave me. I'm out of there. I will not live in fear. I'm out of there. I command you to leave. In Jesus' holy name, leave. I'm out of there. You heard leave. that, devil. You do not have control of my family, my wife, ever Hallelujah. again. Do not. You will not go to my home. Oh, no. You will not be in my heart. You no. will not be in my soul. No, I'm out. You will not touch my wife. You will not touch my family. You will not touch my friends. Hallelujah. You will not touch me. You will leave in the name of Christ. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. All the way. Come all the way out of there. Come out of there. That family curse. You come out of there. Here, don't, don't swallow any of that. Come out of there. Come out of there. Anger and rage and lust. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there, evil. Evil, come out of there. Evil, come out. All the lusts that came in through high school. All the lusts that came in through college. All the divorce spirits. Come out of there. Come out of there. Keep going. Keep going. You got him. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I don't want to live in a spiritual stupor, Lord. I want to be able to see it. I see things perfectly at work. I know how to manage it. I know how to get it done. I know how to take care of it, Lord. I need spiritual wisdom and discernment, Lord. I want you to free me from every spiritual stupor that tried to block me from the knowledge of God, that tried to block me from perseverance and fighting the good fight of faith. In the name of Jesus, come out of there right now. Come out of there feeling spiritually timid. timid. You come out right now. Come out of there. Those fear spirits, anything in that body, you come out of there. Come out, any spirits of infirmity that attack this body, give them chronic back pain, you come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. The prayers are going to get answered, you foul devil. Come out right now, those devouring spirits. You come out now. Devouring his prayers, devouring his faith, devouring the blessings. You come out right now in the name of Jesus. Keep going. Get him on out. Take a big breath. Come out of there right now. Come out of my mind in the name of Jesus. Come out of my mind. I'm tired of you tormenting me. I'm tired of you tormenting me. I'm tired of you telling me to be timid. Come out. I have a spirit of boldness. I have a spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Come out of there right now. Stop tormenting me from the blessings. Stop tormenting me and taking away the blessings in the name of Jesus. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Take two. Hey, sir, is there anyone you need to forgive that you haven't forgave that did you real bad? Okay, so, all right, just do it right now. Heavenly Father, I believe you forgave me, Lord. The minute I called upon you and told you I was sorry, you forgave me, Lord. So I messed up, Lord, but you give me a second chance. I take it by faith, and I forgive myself, Lord. I'm sorry for doubting your word, Lord. I'm sorry for being critical to myself and blocking my blessings. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, self-hatred, you come up out of there right now. 
Yes. Come out of there. Yes. Come out. This assassin, you tormentor. Come out of there right now. Come out of there, you tormentor. You told him he was unworthy. You told him he was unfaithful. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Self-hatred. Come out of there. Come out of there. Unforgiveness towards himself. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Keep fighting them until he's all gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You're healing my friend's mind. Thank you for healing his mind. Thank you for the healing power of Jesus. Thank you for the healing power, healing his emotions. Thank you for giving him strength, Lord, to make godly decisions. Thank you for the wisdom through your word. Any foul, evil spirit, you come out. Any foul spirit that came in through abuse, childhood abuse, I command you to come out. Verbal abuse in his adolescence, I command you to come out right now. In the name of Jesus, come out of there. All that fear of not being restored, all that fear, in the name of Jesus, come out of there. All the way, keep going, in the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, Lord, I'm done fighting. I'm done fighting now, Lord. I'm surrendering. I'm, I've been fighting the wrong fight. I've been fighting myself. I've been fighting people. I, I've been double-minded, Lord. I'm going to believe, Lord. Tonight I believe. And I'm going to fight the good fight of faith to believe, Lord Jesus. To believe, Lord Jesus. To believe you. That you called me to good things. You called me to the blessings, Lord. I want to get out of the curses. I want to get out of this miry pit where I can't move and I can't prosper. Lord, I want to move, Lord, with the blessings of God upon my life. Thank you, Lord. There's blessings. I'm interested in them, Lord. I, have, I want to be a servant, Lord. I want to do all that you commanded me to do. You've given me a strategy and a gift to win souls, Lord, to love people and get that love to them, Lord. I want to be faithful with it. Free me, Lord, from the double-mindedness and the critical nature. Any spirit that I picked up through the sex, drugs, rock and roll, or sinful life in my adolescence, free me, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. All those spirits that came in through his teenage years, come out of there right now. All the foul spirits that came in through all that godless music and the partying and the drinking, you come up out of there right now. Come up out of that chest. Come up out of that chest. Fight him. I'm not going home with you. I'm not bringing you back to my house in Jesus' name. I'm not bringing you back to my house, Lord. Thank you that you heal the brokenhearted, Lord. Lord, people all her life have tried to step all over her heart and crush her emotions, Lord. But you called her to be strong, Lord, in her faith. You called her to be victorious. Somehow the devil must have got an insight to it, and so he went ahead and tried to step on her emotions and crush her internally, Lord. And I'm thanking you for the freedom, Lord, the freedom that, Lord, she can believe for the victory, that she can believe for the turnaround, that she can believe for you working in her life for good. Thank you for that faith. Come out of there right now, all that pain in this body. I'm commanding you to come out. You've riddled her with pain all the time. And you've accused God that if God loved her, then he would heal her from the pain. I command the pain to come out right now. Come out of this back. Come out of the head right now. All the migraines. Come out of there right now. All the pain in the back. You come out right now. All the sickness. I'm commanding you to come out of the woman of God right now. I'm commanding you to come out of the woman of God right now. Come out of there. Pain, come out of there. Pain, come out of there. I command pain to come out of the body. Pain, you come out of the body right now. Pain, come out of there. Come out of there right now. Pain, you come out of there right now. Mystery illnesses, migraines. I command you to come out. Sleeplessness and restlessness, hopelessness and despair. I command you to come out. Fight him. Get him all the way out. Tonight's your night. Fight him. Lord, we repented of it long ago, Lord, every demonic thing that told him to mark himself up under that bondage, under that oppression. Lord, we thank you, Lord, you make it new, Lord. You make him new, that he's not under a curse. He's under the blessing. He's under the blessing of mercy and forgiveness. He's under the blessing of the blood of Jesus Christ. You foul spirit that came in through the drugs, that came in through the evil, that came in through the songs, that came in through the piercing of the skin. I command you to come out right now. 
You're not going to stall in this body. I call you out. I separate every one of you one from another. I forbid you to aid and abed one another. You come out now as your name is called. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there, you choker. All that evil from rock and roll. Come out right now. All those spirits that came in to have him jamming in those bands. Come out. Come out of there right now, you evil. Come out of there giving him chicks to sedate him to think it was a good place and a good time. You come out of there right now. Come out of there. I command you to come out. You are a spirit of evil. Don't swallow any of that. Come out of there. Evil, come out of there. The bitterness in his bones. Come out of there. The bitterness in his body. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. You're blocking him from his prayers. You're blocking him from his faith. Come out of there. You're always riddling him with doubt and unbelief. You come out of there. Come out of there. Doubt and unbelief. You come out now. Come out. Come out of there. Doubt and unbelief. Come out of there. Come all the way out. Doubt and unbelief. You're coming out of there right now. Come out of all those demons that came in through those tattoos. Come out of there right now. Come out of that marking does not mean you own him. Come out of there. That marking does not mean you own him. He's been washed in the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, sister, can I, can I pray for you? This is an easy one. I, I live the life similar to yours, I assume, at some level. And what happens is when there's friction, it adds, it, it tallies up on women. It becomes so heavy because you had a heart to want to fix it in good prayers, but ultimately men have the decisions to do what they want to do, but you can get that weight off you right now. Okay, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the freedom, Lord, the freedom to believe, the freedom to move into green pastures, Lord, to truly see the turnaround in the family, to see the turnaround in the answers to prayers. Thank you for it. It's happening right now. All those answers. All those prayers are happening right now, Lord. And I thank you for it. But this demonic burden that came in and said no, that told her to quit, you are going to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Every foul spirit, come out of there. Every foul spirit that said no. All those spirits that came into her life that tried to break her heart for years, you come out of there right now. Come all the way out. Come out of there right now. Come out. She forgave her husband. You come out of there right now. She forgave herself. She forgave you, Lord, wondering why you didn't answer. It's over now. She broke through to the blessings now. You come out right now. You come out right now. Come out all that exhaustion. Come out taxing her, taking away all those hours of sleep, making her tired on some nights, unable to get up from bed. Come out of there. You're a terrorizer. Come out of there right now. You've been terrorizing her. It's over now. It's over. They're going to stand in agreement in prayer and see the miracles move. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Not good enough. That unworthiness that came upon her when she was a child. That nitpicked her prayers. Come out of there right now. That unworthiness when her father didn't have enough love and he didn't have that sensitivity to see when she was struggling. We forgive dad in Jesus' name. We forgive him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, all the heaviness. You're leaving these shoulders. I command you to leave the shoulders right now. Leave the shoulders. I command that heaviness, feeling like she walks around with a backpack. Come out of there. It's over now. It's over. You've been exposed. You've been exposed in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come out of there. I break any curse that was ever spoken over her. A curse of failure. A curse that people were jealous of her because of her favor, because of her looks, because of her favor in the marketplace. I cancel every curse that was ever spoken over her, wishing that she would fail from so-called friends that were operating under this power of witchcraft. We forgive them in the name of Jesus, but we cancel that assignment. We cancel that assignment. Hey, Julie. Julie. Could, could you pray for this lady? Probably needs a, Julie's going to talk to you for a couple minutes. She probably got a couple things to tell you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessings. All right. Bless that family, Lord. Bless these men in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to, to equip these men. Lord, you said... You, you equip the ones that you call, Lord. And how do you equip us? You put your love in us, the unconditional love of the Father. You got your love to us by sending your only son, Jesus Christ. Lord, they know the gospel, Lord. You said, treat someone like you yourself want to be treated. They know how to good be pre good preachers and good ministers, Lord. 
because they have sensitivity of how people feel. And they got good sensitivity, Lord, to read where someone's at. But Lord, there's sometimes we sow the seed, sometimes we water, sometimes it's the harvest. I thank you for the spiritual wisdom, Lord, and the discernment, Lord, that they're called for good works. Oh, they're called to prosper and be in good health, even as their souls prosper. Come out, you devouring spirit. He's moving to a new house this week. He's moving to a new place, a blessed place with a bunch of good godly friends. I bind this disfavor curse that was on him. The disfavor curse from the deviant life that he lived in rebellion. That deviant life was washed in the blood. Now the deviant spirits, you are bound, loose, and untied. And you must leave. No more terror. No more terror. No more ridicule. No more nitpicking. We say it's over. Streamers, all you have to do is tell them it's over. It's over. Oh, Lord, you called us to be the head and not the tail. Oh, thank you, Lord, that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Thank you that all the answers to our prayers are yes and amen. Why? Because we believe. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in your word. We believe, Lord, that doubt and unbelief spirit that riddled this man for years, double-minded and critical, double-minded and hypocritical. Come out of there right now. If God called him to prosper, it's not by works, it's by grace. Come out of there. Come out of there. We are saved by grace through faith. This is not of ourselves, but a gift from God. How do we cast out demons? When the Spirit of God comes upon us. Now come out of there right now. Come out of there. It's not by works. It's not by intellect and intelligence. It's by the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to free me. I want to be free from guilt and shame. I want to be free from this, this voice. It mimics my voice. It tries to reason like my reasoning. You are an offense unto me. I know it's you by what you're telling me. In the name of Jesus, it's written, my sheep know my voice and the voice of another. They will not follow. I'm not following this nitpicker. I'm not following this critical spirit. I'm not going down into the road of despair anymore. I'm coming out of the miry pit of deception. Come out of there. Come out of there. What's going on, bro? Come on, man. Get it, get it. Bam. Yeah. All right. There we go. I'm trying to get in the odd spirit of hell because I, I, I have odd towards the Catholic Church. And so right I, there. To talk to Mike. Odd to oh, towards the Catholic Church. Yeah, Come on, Catholic. man. That thing's so big. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, I was set up by the enemy. Your problem is not with the Catholic Church. Your problem is with the enemy. Your problem is with the enemy who set the whole structure up to lead people astray. Yeah. God is leading you to... Yes, what's going on? What are your rights? Yeah. Uh huh. If you just like try to get delivered without the list, you can get delivered any time when you know you got a spirit that's harassing you. You tell it to go in the name of Jesus. That list right there is 16 Bible verses, 16 principles in Scripture to let you know that if you're walking in obedience by doing the word, then he's a trespasser. So that's just the homework assignment. That's just coming from the Bible. When I, what well, years ago, when I first got serious about my faith, yeah, I watched porn and I loved watching porn. Oh, but then like, I remember I went before like this guy Mandala and Delia. Okay. They tried to cast it out, but then the demons spoke back to them and said, "Oh, Ethan wants us to be there." Well, you don't want them there anymore, right? No, I don't. You quit doing it, right? I, I, now, whenever I'm stressed out, I don't go to work. Well, just, praise God. I just do other stuff. Okay, you sit down. Give yourself some grace. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we're not under the spirit of rebellion so that spirits don't have the right just to use our vocal cords and our lips. That's an offense to me that they were doing that to Ethan when he was washing the blood. They tricked him, and they got him to engulf himself into the sins of this world and give place to these wicked spirits. Well, by faith and by your grace, Lord, you led him to repentance and that he knows that's not a place of comfort and a way to take away stress. That's a deception of Satan, alluring him through stress and temptation to go to the and give place to the devil. Lord, he's chose not to do it. He's chose to follow you and repent of all the lust and the porn. So thank you that he can be free, Lord. It's written, whom the Son sets free. You gave him the power to get off that porn. He couldn't have done it without you. It says, without you, we can do nothing. We read it today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, come out of there, devil. You lied to him now. There ain't no talking tonight. It's coming on out in Jesus' name. 
all those spirits that came in through his years of rebellion and lust and porn. I know how deviant, nasty stuff you put on that porn. We hate all of it. It's offense to all of us. In the name of Jesus, we come against you. We separate you one from another. We forbid you to aid and abed one another. We tell you when their name is called, you come out. Come out. Come out of there right now. You try to get him double-minded, thinking they won't come out, that they own him. You don't own somebody that was washed in the blood. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. You don't own someone washed in the blood. You don't have authority over someone that turned their back on sin. You're a liar. Now come out of there. Stop tormenting him and come out of there. Come out of the airwaves. Come out of the chest. Come off the genitals. Come out of their ungodly sexual fantasies and deviance. You come out of there right now. Come out of there. Stop choking him and come out. Come out of there his mind, mind control. Come out of there. Poor self-worth and rejection. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Go on out of there in Jesus' name. Lord, we repent from hating the Catholic Church. We repent of taking offense with them. We, re take, we repent of owning fear and any type of self-judgment, critical nature, all this anxiety, this whole list, Lord. We don't need this list. In the name of Jesus, because you're our deliverer, Lord. You know all things, Lord. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're the almighty God, the everlasting Father, the great I am. Yo, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit power. That's all we needed was the power. You make all things visible. Nothing can hide in the darkness. You're trying to trick him in the darkness. You're trying to trick him like a textbook. I command you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for sending the Holy Spirit power to come and deliver this man right now. Thank you, Lord. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. There's grace and mercy. There's patience and kindness. And now that he's repented, there's power to be delivered in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out of there. God, stop terrorizing me. Stop terrorizing me with these lists. I forgive the Catholic Church. I bless every single Catholic. I bless every evil person on this planet. I bless and I do not curse. I'm not cursed anymore. You lied to me. You tried to make me a robot. Come out of there right now. You tried to make me a robot. Come out of there in Jesus' name. I have the broken body of Jesus. I have his name. He is my advocate. He's on my side. Jesus is for me. Come out of there right now. We have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ. Come out of there, mind binder. He's not cursed. He's not under the curse. He's under the blood. Come out of there. Come out of that brain. 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 Come out of there. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Anxieties about demons. Fear about demons. Come out of there. Demons are like weeds. Farmers don't get scared of weeds. They get the hoe out. They start whacking them down. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Fear of demons. Come out of there. Fear of demons. Come out of those hands. Come out of there. All that shaking in his hands. All those curses that came into his hands. All the masturbation spirits. You come out of those hands. He's called to prosper and be in good health. He's called to lay hands on sick people and then see them recover. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. Come out of there. All the guilt and shame because of the occult activity. All the shame and condemnation that makes him believe that this is what he deserves. We don't get what we deserve as believers. We get mercy. We get grace and help in our time of need because of the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Keep fighting him. You've got the anointing. You got the anointing of Jesus Christ. He's helping you. Streamers, streamers, when you have the anointing, run with it. Take it. Take it to the bank. Don't count it for common. Don't take it for granted. Say, I want it all. I want to be free. Heavenly Father, I'm praying for the streamers right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for every streamer that's sick in his body. I pray for those that are sick and busted in joints and ligaments and tendons. They got diseases in those bodies. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord. That you bore our sins on the cross. Oh, Lord, you defeated every sickness and disease. For the train of your robe fills your holy temple, Lord, because you are the king of all kings. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the healing power to come through to everyone watching online. Lord, I pray for the healing of their mind and emotions. I bless any nitpicker that came in there to criticize uh, us as a ministry. I bless you right now in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit power would touch you and comfort you and know that, Lord... They are loved. 
Thank you, Lord, for the unconditional love of the Father, the mercy of the Son of God. I pray for healing now, Lord, upon those that are diseased, that those, those organs would regenerate and restore. I pray for those that are having bad backs, Lord, that they would be healed, bad necks and migraine headaches, mystery illnesses. Lord, I thank you for healing. I thank you for freedom from cancer and tumors. I thank you for freedom from the jabs in Jesus' name. I pray that every foul spirit that's trying to work with the spirit of infirmity to cause sickness and disease or pain, I bind your power. I loose your holds, and I command you to come out right now. <clears throat> Take a big breath. Come out of there. Come out of there. Take a big breath, streamers. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Streamers, tell them to go right now. Sure. So I have a question. Like, what the medications I take for my mental illnesses, like, I don't know if I should still take them. Well, I think you gotta you got to keep growing in godliness that God can supersede that. It says you can drink something deadly and it won't even hurt you. God's got your back. You don't need to worry about all that. You got to get yourself built back up in your most holy faith, yes. right? You got to get your faith going. Yes. You got to get your joy back. Yes. You got to learn how to just get five good minutes on your break time with the Lord. You got to you got to just come up out and get blessed. Once you're set up on solid ground, He'll make all that stuff known to you. Well, now you got to get the joy. You fasted, and this is where you're at right now. He led you to a place where you could get free. That you could get your joy back, that you could get your favor with God back, that you could have some favor with man so that you could win souls. Yes. You got to get yourself out of this class of feeling like a misfit or a failure. You're not. You're yes. a new creature in Christ Jesus. He loves you. He's helping you. He's going to give you your like, mind back, your memory back, your biblical recall. It's going to go into operation. One of the ways the devil tried to deceive me was he tried to make me doubt whether I was baptized or not. Well, what do you mean? If you went into the water or you didn't? I mean, it's just, it's just meant false memories. Oh, head. okay. No, no. Write some things down. Stand on, uh, on those good days where your memory is clicking. But he's the accuser. That's how you know God's helping you right now. When he's helping someone, he's working with a great amount of power of mercy to, to raise you up and to encourage you. This is the season you're in. So anything nitpicking you, riding you down, you know it's not God. And you're not going to do it to yourself, so you know it's not you. By yes. definition, you'll be able to identify it is him. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I remember my friend Mandela and Noelia, like, they live in Argentina, but they're, they're basically men of God. Amen. People of God. And well, praise God. They, they talk about the, they talk about, this one thing I have a question is, they talk about the Trinity being false, but... They think Jesus is Lord, but then God, the Father, is God, and like His Holy Spirit. Which comes I just read it. He says, "Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, baptizing them in the name of the Son, and baptizing them in the name of the Holy Spirit. There are three that bear witness in heaven. Yeah. Oh, three, it said. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three." Agree as one. It's a mystery. But don't knock them for that. Sounds like they love you. Don't try to fix them. Get yourself fixed. Get yourself up on solid ground. Yes. Be thankful for that God sent them into your way to help you and pray for you. Do all those good things they did for you. Yeah, it's like I struggle with OC I've struggled with OCD and bipolar and autism. Well, now you're now you're moving on to green pastures, which is the restoration of your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Yeah. I You're still, in the restoration season. I do think that all Christians should fast at least once or twice a week. Hey, that, I wouldn't argue with you. In this sense, day and world, I'm, I would say no one would ever suffer. Hey, God bless you, bro. Good to see you. Thanks for blessing, bro. All right. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All the way from Payson. I drove through there today. Great weather. It was 55 degrees. Yeah. Beautiful up there. Yeah. Hey, Ethan. Keep going, brother. God bless you. Keep coming anytime, Fridays and Saturdays. I mean, Thursdays and Fridays. You're on the time of restoration. Believe for it. What's happening, sir? What's your name? Braden. Braden? Good to meet you. I'm Ray. What's going on? 